No, hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we are on hour three of a three hour live stream. Leigh and I have been, we, we, yeah, we've got, yeah, we've been doing extended live streams. So we are filling ourselves up with calories. We, what's, we called it cookies, coffee, and conversation. But in reality, <laughs> just so we can keep ourselves fueled through three hours. Yeah. What a nice way to do it. <laughs> Leah, would you like to introduce Dickon? Yes. Oh, we, are, we were just looking forward again and again to have a, a conversation with you, Dickon. And we are so glad that you came. Dickon Bettinger is... Um, was a, a student of Sydney Banks for uh, almost 40 years. Am I right, Dick? Well, 23 years with Sid. Uh, and he died 10 years ago. Uh, so 33 years ago is about, I've been a psychologist for over 40 years. Oh, that's the thing with the 40. <laughs> <laughs> And 50. I know. There when the numbers get that high. <laughs> as well, no? With the marriage? 53 years. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. A very experienced man in life and love. Hmm. So, That's very nice. It's just a pleasure to have you with us. And Dickon. Bettinger is actually the first one we put in the summit, My Secret Life, as a speaker, because you just, for us, you have a light and deep and beautiful way to speak about these three principles that mm -hmm. is all about we speak. And we, we wanted to, participants to just have a feeling, even though probably they do not understand it at the beginning, but mm -hmm. to just feel that that there is a truth in it, and that's why you were our first speaker on the summit. Mm -hmm. And it's very lovely to have you here on the summit. Um, you are speaking about this transition, how you felt before, and after you came across this understanding and today it's kind of all about the same things but with different words again and yeah yeah the idea was just to spread this hope and lightness and to talk about what we see and how it how we feel another kind of freedom or hope in this time through or with this understanding. Yeah. We just would love to hear what what you would say to that. Hmm. I'd like to start with the metaphor of light. Because this is the time of year when people all over the world celebrate light mm. in all different cultures, all different religions, all different traditions. There's a universal recognition of light as a symbol of our true nature as a symbol of love, as a symbol of peace. Light brings warmth and nourishment. So, I'd like to talk about the inner light. Because Thirty-three years ago, when I met this man, Sidney Banks, he had gone deeply 
into that inner light. And he realized the oneness of life. And he realized what is meant by our true self. And he came back from that experience. It's interesting that people call that experience enlightenment. But he believed very, very deeply that everyone has this light within because he had experienced it so deeply and directly. It wasn't a belief, it was a knowing. When he had this experience and he came back from that experience, if you will, he realized that this life formless life energy dances in the form to create everything that exists. And he discovered what he called the universal principles or the most foundational forces in life. Three ways of talking about the same formless energy dancing in the form. And he called it universal thought, universal consciousness, universal mind, because that's the source of life for all human beings. And he said that as any person realizes what's true about life and about human beings, those insights bring us back to this light within. It brings us there. Now, I'll see if I can explain what I mean by that. <laughs> so we can think of universal mind as the intelligence behind all of life that knows how to create and operate life. Without that, there would be no life. Without that, there would be no human beings. Without that, there would be no source of life, no source of our life. Universal consciousness is what allows us to be aware of what's created. And universal thought, divine thought, is the creative potential that creates all the varieties of human experience. Everything we experience from agony to ecstasy is created by this gift, this gift that allows us to have experiences. So we have a loving thought, we feel loving. We have a sad thought, we feel sad. We have a stressful thought, we feel stress. In other words, the source of all human experience are the principles. Only the energy behind life has the power to create life itself. Nothing in the world, the form, has the power of creation to create. This is what Sid realized. It's an inside-out job. <laughs> Inside being formless, creative energy that takes form, right? Creates our mental activity, which consciousness turns into sensory experience and feeling so we can experience life. What a gift. He called them divine gifts. So, we all think. And as we get older, we spend more and more time thinking about life. And sometimes we get so caught up in thinking that it covers up the light within. We get very serious. We get upset. We think about things. We feel 
and underlying tension a good part of the time. And then every once in a while we fall out of all of the thinking that we're doing. We become really conscious and present. And then for no reason we start feeling better and getting new and fresh thinking. So I've shared this understanding with people for 33 years. And when people begin to insightfully understand, oh, wait a minute, I'm sitting here thinking about something that's not even happening right now. It happened in the past or it's an imagined future and I'm thinking about it and I'm, it's creating this feeling in me. And we sort of wake up to the fact that we're the thinker. <laughs> and guess what? When we really see it's our own thinking doing it. We're not anxious about the test we're going to take. We're not upset about what somebody said. We're anxious because we're having anxious thoughts. We're upset because we're having upsetting thoughts. And when we realize that, Here's the beautiful thing. When human beings drop the thinking that creates their tension, stress, or upset, they wake up, become more present, and then the old thinking goes away because it's just condensed energy. It melts. What's left is presence. We're awake, we're alive, we're in the moment. No past, no future, which is just thought. And in that presence, there's a knowing. We just have common sense. We know what to do. We know when to eat when we're hungry. We know when to sleep when we're tired. We know when to say things and when not to say things. Common sense. So... Sid would say, as you begin to realize that we live in the world of thought, you begin to take more and more responsibility for your thinking. And quite simply, you start dropping thoughts that create tension, stress, and upset. Why would I hold on to it? Why would I keep thinking about something if it makes me feel worse and worse? I love seeing people catch on to this. Even little kids I've worked with, four or five years old, can realize their thinking and feeling and that they're just feeling their own thinking and they can come back to the now and in the now everything we're thinking settles out and we feel more peaceful. Peace of mind is very simply a psychological state where the thoughts that were creating tension, stress, and upset fall away, quiet down. Peace that passes understanding. We can't think our way to peace. At times, everybody experiences peace when we're fully present. If we don't understand that's our natural state, we'll blame that peace on what's happening around us. <laughs> you could be in the most beautiful, peaceful, loving situation. I've done that many times. And get caught up in my thinking and feel tension, stress, or upset. So the peace isn't in the situation. But isn't it interesting that when people's minds clear and they feel peaceful, they say, well, I feel peaceful because I'm on vacation. I'm peaceful because I'm with a friend. I'm peaceful because the sun is out. But none of those things have the power to create. None of them. <laughs> okay, here's, the, here's what I love. This, this is a season to celebrate light and the coming of light. My wife's birthday is December 22nd, the darkest, longest day of the year, but it's heralded as the day when the light returns, the coming of the light. Now, it's a metaphor. When we're caught up in thought, our life can seem quite dark and heavy. 
And when we fall out of our thinking, we lighten up. Let me read you my favorite quote from Sid Banks because it's relevant to this. And I think it's, it's not only a summary of his whole teaching, but I think it's a summary of all true spiritual teaching. It transcends culture and differences and because universally people have had the experience of having insight into the nature of thought, having insight into the nature of what Sid called pure consciousness, awareness free of conceptual distortion, free of personal thinking, pure consciousness, no judgments. Dalai Lama says love is just the absence of judgments. No judgments. Seeing life as it is. Not through positive thinking. Seeing life as it is. A smudged window that you wipe clean and you can see more clearly. It's not distorted. Clarity of mind, peace of mind, same thing. I love this Christmas season, this holiday season, Hanukkah season, celebration of the light and Buddhism and Hinduism. And it's the light is one of the oldest metaphors for our true nature. You walk into a dark room, you light one candle and the light fills the room. Light overcomes darkness. You go outside and hold that candle up and the light from that candle will radiate to infinity because it's just energy released. If you were on another planet and had a sense and enough instrument, you could measure the light when it reached that planet. This is our true nature when we lighten up. Light is the bearer of peace, joy, love, compassion, harmony, caring, when people die, we say, go to the light. Now we're saying, while people are still alive, you don't have to wait until you die. The heaven Isn't this good news? Mm -hmm. Isn't this good news? So here's the quote from Sid. This was from a talk any of you can listen to. It's It's... You can stream it for free on SidBanks.com. And it's from a lecture series he gave called The Great Illusion in the Long Beach Lecture Series. Okay, here's the quote. All right, we're caught up in thought all the time. And it's a very dark, small world. Concepts reduce life to very narrow, little parameters right like if you have if you're with your partner or your spouse or, or a friend and you are holding on to concepts of love you're nowhere near what love is because love can only be experienced when we let go of all concepts and then it's given to us freely. You start feeling closer to that person. So here's how Sid says it. You have to go beyond all concepts. That blew me away. When I had an insight, it was like, oh my God, wait a minute, did he say all? 
even my precious spiritual concepts, even even concepts of love, even what's it mean? What's it mean to go beyond all concepts? Do I ever do that? As, or is it just so ordinary we don't even see it? Can I see that tree without any labels or concepts? Can I see my wife without looking through an idea about her and what she is and what she's saying means? And can I be fully present? Right? It's, it's the most ordinary thing in the world, but if we don't see it, we don't know it. And if we don't know it, we don't know to go there, in a sense, when we're having difficulty. Most adults, when they're feeling tension, stress, or upset, don't go to the quiet within. They think even harder about life. <laughs> <laughs> it's a misunderstanding it's been around for centuries and Sid says you're going in the wrong direction turn around look within which just it doesn't mean look within your body it means let go of every idea belief and concept just for a moment just temporarily you can always pick up your computer again anytime you want to but you're not meant to live in your computer All right, so get familiar with this other world, not the world of concepts and ideas and beliefs. Not another world, it's very different. Just, you have to go beyond all concepts and you will find it in the stillness of your mind. Here we, here we are at peace. People experience peace of mind when they're not caught up in their own story about themselves or life. It's ordinary. It's available to anybody. Sid would say, we're caught up in thought, we're thought away from the now, and in the now there's a peace because you're not caught up in and influenced and engaged in concepts just in that moment. And you will find it in the stillness of your mind and the quiet chambers of your mind when you go from the known, the intellect, to the unknown, which is paradoxically a deeper knowing. Mm -hmm. It's a knowing not of the intellect, it's a knowing of wisdom. And he's gonna talk about that right now and in connection with this metaphor of light into the quiet chambers of your mind when you go from the known to the unknown, from the physical to the spiritual, from form to formless, right? When you hear beyond the word, beyond my words, beyond your words, beyond all ideas, beyond all words, right? Into this quiet silence beyond the words, stillness, peace, when you hear beyond the word, an inner light goes on. Now this is a metaphor. We, an inner light goes on and it brings out inner knowledge and wisdom, spiritual intelligence before the contamination of human thought. This has been happening our whole life Often with us being unaware of it and unconscious, we haven't had insight into the truth of this. There is a space within, metaphorically, every human being, that if we can take one little step beyond our personal thinking into the now, into pure consciousness, presence, This light goes on. Yeah. Now, the reason why light has been used for centuries, I think of people sitting after the discovery of fire. Man, you'd sit around all night in your cave, 
gazing at this fire because there wasn't a hole and there weren't movies or, <laughs> you know, there wasn't all the entertainment. So they're just sitting gazing into this fire and then our personal thinking quiets down when we're fully present. And we start feeling the inner warmth of peace, of contentment. And in that feeling, there's a sense of a realization of the truth that we're all connected, that we're all one. So when I get really quiet, I feel closer to anything in front of me. Anything, anybody. I go for a walk in the woods. If I'm in my thinking, I can feel all kinds of tension or anxiety. I don't experience beauty. Right? I don't. I wake up to the fact of thought, come back to the now. My head clears. The trees start looking beautiful. The birds sound beautiful. Our senses come alive. Pure consciousness. Our senses start singing, which is the foundation of enjoyment. You can be at work, drop out of thoughts that create stress, and start feeling a deeper sense of connection to your purpose at work, to being of service to other people, right? To this feeling of uh, enjoying satisfaction, job satisfaction. We've seen where we've gone into companies and people learn about the principle of thought and began to fall out of thoughts that burden them, yeah. that they always report enjoying their work more. Isn't that interesting? We enjoy our kids more. We enjoy our spouses more. We enjoy our friends more. Because our senses come alive when we unburden them. And then these deeper feelings emerge of love and compassion and you know, they talk about when we meet somebody and we fall in love. We fall out of our personal thinking, get fully present because we're gaga. <sighs> and, then, and then the heart light shines through. Light has been used, it's, it's considered the oldest psychological metaphor of we have our sky mind that has weather, which means we feel our thinking. And when the weather clears, as it does when we're present, it's blue sky, clear sky, open sky, spacious sky. These are all words that have been used by spiritual teachers for centuries. Right? And then the clouds part, blue sky, then the sun shines through with warmth and nourishment. When I don't feel close to my wife, I know I'm caught in conceptual judgments and limited thinking and ideas. And when I fall out of my head, you know, this is a metaphor, we were only talking metaphors here, fall from head into our heart. And I feel closer to her. The other day, for the first time in a long time, I got really caught up in my thinking and I raised my voice really loud with my wife and both, both of us were sort of shocked. 
<laughs> and it was like, oh my God, did it, oh man. And I realized I had gotten lost, which all of us can do. Any, we can all do, it's normal. But I recognized it, and I knew that I, it was just a thought problem. I had gotten caught up in my thoughts that create upset. And those thoughts seem, when we're caught up in them, they seem real. When I let go of them, they just dissolve. They don't even exist. Right? That's why Sid called this talk the great illusion. <laughs> right? When the illusion falls away, you know what's left? Light, peace, joy, love, compassion, our true self the recognition of our oneness and connection to life. What some people call our innate health, yeah. our well-being, that deep in this well is pure being, inner light, love. Go to the light. So let me finish this <laughs> quote. <laughs> Be grateful for the spiritual wisdom you have found that has changed your life. Because it's been happening our whole life, whether we know it or not. When our head's clear, those are times when we like listening to music. That's when we enjoy music. If you're worrying, I guarantee you won't even hear the music, nonetheless enjoy it. My wife liked one composer. I thought it sounded like an ongoing traffic accident. <laughs> so I had a lot of judgments in my thinking about it. And I'm going, oh my God, how do you, this is horrible. It's like, it's like torturing cats. It's just screeching and screaming and it's chaotic and it. She goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I love this. See, different thoughts different thoughts. Now, I didn't have to, but if I want to learn to appreciate something that I don't like, I have to let go of my old thoughts, my judgment, so that I, they can be replaced by new thoughts. So we went to a dance performance, and all of a sudden, they're dancing to a piece composed by this composer very repetitive, over and over music, and I get into my judgments, and I'm not liking or appreciating this at all. And then I realize I'm thinking up dissatisfaction and judgment. I'm doing that. No one else is. It's not coming from the music. It's my thinking. And it brought me back to where I don't know anything about anything, back to the now, which is the only place we can find enjoyment. It's the only place we can find peace, joy, love, creativity, beauty. And all of a sudden, this is how wisdom works. It reminded me of something I read in the program before the performance, that someone said if during this performance just watch the heads of the dancers <laughs> now that's a different and new thought for me because <laughs> i'm listening to screeching cats which is means my own thinking i'm not watching i'm not even watching the dancers i'm just sitting there going oh god how long is this one going to last and really and I fell out of that and I saw the dancers, their, their heads moving and how they were all right together and it was like this wave in the ocean with the seaweed and all of a sudden it's like this beautiful thing. And, it, and again, I was surprised and shocked because wisdom always brings us new and fresh. And it knows what to bring that's helpful. 
If you're in a horrific situation, it'll bring you clarity so that you can know how to save your life, when to run, when to call the police, right? It's wise. It's called the wisdom. It's our true nature. It's built into this presence, into this feeling energy of life. Okay. Be grateful for the spiritual wisdom you have found that's changed your life. When we're really grateful for the fact that we're being lived and that we're connected to the whole and that we're connected to love and wisdom, it does something for us. So he says, it's a feeling when, when we fall into this, some people call it the heart space. I like that. Fall from your head into your heart, into this spaciousness that's not limited by any concepts or beliefs. Wide open. It's a feeling. You're looking for a feeling. Don't listen to the words. Look for a feeling. So let's come back to light. When I, this is something I've been not, just noticing, this is just Dick and talking to because I love sort of seeing what I can see. When I, I'm recognizing that when I'm not holding any thought in mind and I'm fully present, no matter what I'm feeling, that feeling is just energy and without labels and judgment, there's nothing wrong with any feeling. There's no waiting for a better feeling. That's an idea. That's ego. Always wanting more and better. Never this. So always dissatisfied. So I can feel upset and when I'm fully present and not holding, my mind opens up and then spiritual teaching says that's when your heart opens up. Now, what that means is what I'm feeling, the hurt, the anger, the upset, I can feel it begin to open like a candle light radiating. And I had the insight, every feeling is love in disguise. Every feeling is nothing but light. Physicists say all of life is just light. Darkness is just condensed light. Mm -hmm. Pure energy condensed. And when we take the container of thought concepts away, it's like taking a basket off of the candle and the light's always there within waiting to shine forth. I've worked with people who have spent their life in prison. When they begin to wake up to the fact of thought, rest in the now, their light shines forth. They become friendly, kind, considerate, compassionate even. And it shocks them because they didn't know that was in there. Nobody told them. Nobody said, as Sid Banks said to me and shocked me, he said, you have as much wisdom as anyone on this planet because we're all connected to the same of life energy that's full of this intelligence, full of this knowing. It's so simple, we don't see it. When we're driving a car, if we're caught up in thought, we're having accidents. Where you don't want to be with a driver who's completely caught up in some thought story. We have to get a certain degree present, and when we're a certain degree present, without thinking, we're making life and death decisions. That's wisdom. I woke up in the middle of the night last night worrying about something, and all of a sudden it occurred to me, oh, wisdom will take care of this. Because I'm finding out over and over again, as Sid would say, in that feeling, 
He said it's just a nice feeling when when we don't hold a feeling down by thought, when we uncover it, it reveals itself. It's true nature. And it radiates. And he said in that feeling is wisdom. You just know what to do. I've been in family situations where people got really upset, I got upset, and all of a sudden I realized I'm not in that heart space, I'm in my head. And I drop in. As Sid would say, we're always a thought away from the now, from freedom, peace. Being at peace, even when you're feeling upset, you can be at peace because you have no judgment about it now. It's an unconditional peace, an unconditional joy, enjoyment, unconditional love that embraces everything. Because it's, as a psychologist from Stanford says, it's it, the bigger feelings mean we connect with something bigger. Right? So anytime we fall out of the personal ego and we touch this space that's the energy of life itself, literally, we start having bigger feelings. And a big feeling can contain a little feeling. So I can be upset, fall into the now, and there's a different feeling of presence. And what I'm learning is when I'm present, my feeling is opening. And when I'm present, my mind is open, my heart is opening. I have all the common sense I need to be kind to people, even if I'm enraged. Because mm -hmm. that light of wisdom shines through any thought storm as soon as there's a little opening. So I live in the northwest of the United States and and the weather they always say today there will be sun breaks. <laughs> and I love there's that metaphor. And human beings have sun breaks too. We're so upset and then we get present. And then this light shines through. So I was telling you the other day I got upset with my wife. Actually, I had upsetting thoughts that I didn't see as thought, and I was sure that I was right about something. And then I woke back up out of the illusion of thought into the now. Here's what my common sense did. Now, I did not plan this. I did not think about it. it had nothing to do with my intellect. I've never done this before in my life. I dropped to my knees, crawled across the room, put my head in my wife's lap, and I said, oh, great one, I am unworthy. <laughs> and she burst out laughing. And then I had tears in my eyes, and I gave her a big hug and said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I got so caught up, I can't believe it. We had a good laugh, and it's over. It's over. So there's a space within, which just means beyond our thinking, that's full of light, full of. We empty. I studied the mystics, and they all talk about emptying, which means emptying of personal thought. And then there's this infilling. We feels like we're filling up with nice feeling and then we give it away that's kindness love service being compassionate when we see other people caught up in their thinking not knowing it and suffering and acting out of that forgive them for they know not what they do kind of deal you know, because we all do that at times because we get lost innocently, innocently. 
So the good news is no matter how lost we get, we can wake up and return to the light and that light will literally guide us toward how to move through whatever circumstance we're in. No matter how dangerous or difficult or challenging that situation is, it's no match for wisdom. It's the intelligence that knows how to create the universe and helping you just navigate a little problem in your life is like nothing, nothing. Universal mind. Right, is the intelligence that creates and governs all life. And when our minds are quiet, it shines through as the light of wisdom, the light of love. The heart space, the heart light, the being, I love the phrase being light hearted has whole new meaning, deeper meaning to me. What it means, even when I'm upset, to wake up to our natural state of lightheartedness. You know what seriousness is? Holding ideas. So light, that inner light, brings peace and it's uplifting and nourishing. So it says that's what nourishes our souls. That's what it means to be renewed in spirit, made new again in spirit. And that brings hope. Because no matter how bad things get, and I understand, they, I know they can get really bad, really bad, that the hope is there's a light within us that will uplift us and guide us no matter what circumstance presents itself. No exceptions. I found that to be true in unbelievable circumstance. I used to say wisdom. Once you realize about mind, you learn that wisdom has your back. And then my friend Elsie Spittle took it a step further and said, dig in, wisdom is your back. <laughs> it's not separate behind you. It is you. You are that. So, so that was what came to me last night and this morning as I started off reflecting on peace and hope and then it somehow it kept coming back around to light. Mm -hmm. Each one of us within is one of these lights. And each of those lights are connected to one cord. The same source. And that cord connects to one source of energy. So mind, consciousness, thought. There we are again. Another way of talking about it. Well... Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, Happy Festival of the Lights. May we all celebrate the light coming back to illuminate our darkness. <laughs>